What's up everybody, and welcome to the Hydraulic Engineering Tutorial YouTube channel. Today, we show experiment number 24, to study the performance of a Francis turbine. Apparatus. One, a Francis turbine with an arrangement for adjusting the guide vane positions, hand wheel with suitable link mechanisms. Second, supply pump unit. Third, flow measurement unit, via's venturi meter with manometer. Fourth, tachometer. Fifth, pressure gauges at the inlet and outlet of turbine. Sixth, rope brake dynamometer with spring balance connected to the turbine shaft. The main parts of a Francis turbine are, one, penstock. It is a large size conduit which conveys water from the upstream of the dam reservoir to the turbine runner. Second, spiral scroll casing. It constitutes a closed passage whose cross-sectional area gradually decreases along the flow direction. Area is maximum at inlet and nearly zero at exit. Dry. Guide veins. Wicket gates. These veins direct the water onto the runner at an angle appropriate to the design. The motion to them is given by means of a hand wheel or automatically by a governor. Fourth. Governing mechanism. It changes the position of the guide blades, chach, veins, to affect a variation in water flow rate when the load conditions on the turbine change. 5. Runner and runner blades. The driving force on the runner is both due to impulse reactions effects. The number of runner blades usually varies between 16 to 24. 6. Draft tube. It is a gradually expanding tube which discharges water, passing through the runner, to the tail race. The modern Francis turbine is an inward mixed flow reaction turbine. In the earlier stages of development, Francis turbine had a purely radial flow runner, i.e., water under pressure, enters the runner from the guide vanes towards the center in radial direction and discharges out of the runner axially. The Francis turbine operates under medium heads and also requires medium quantity of water. It is employed in the medium head power plants. This type of turbine covers a wide range of heads. Water is brought down to the turbine through a penstock and directed to a number of stationary orifices fixed all around the circumference of the runner. These stationary orifices are commonly called as guide vanes or wicket gates. The head acting on the turbine is partly transformed into kinetic energy and the rest remains as pressure head. There is a difference of pressure between the guide vanes and the runner, which is called the reaction pressure and is responsible for the motion of the runner. That is why a Francis turbine is also known as reaction turbine. In Francis turbine, the pressure at inlet is more than that at the outlet. This means that the water in the turbine must flow in a closed conduit. Unlike the Pelton type, where the water strikes only a few of the runner buckets at a time, in the Francis turbine, the runner is always full of water. The moment of runner is affected by the change of both the potential and kinetic energies of water. After doing the work, the water is discharged to the tail race through a closed tube of gradually enlarging section. This is known as draft tube. It does not allow water to fall freely to tail race level, as in the Pelton turbine. The free end of the draft tube is submerged deep in tail water making. Thus, the entire water passage, right from the head race up to the tail race, totally enclosed. Procedure 1. Note the inlet and outlet pipe diameters and measure the brake drum diameter and Z1 and Z2 IE, the distances of inlet and outlet pressure gauge tappings from the center line of the turbine. 2. Start the supply pump, keeping the guide vanes completely closed. 3. Open the guide vanes partially, e.g. 1, 1 or 4, 2 th of total opening, simultaneously adjusting the load on the brake drum so that the speed of turbine is within limits. 4. Measure the discharge, Q. Note the readings of the pressure gauges P1 and P2. 6. Note the readings of W, load on the hanger, and S, spring balance, and the shaft, speed, N, 7. Vary the speed of the turbine by varying the load, i.e., W and S, on the brake drum and take 6 to 7 readings in the allowable range of speed. 8. Change the guide vane opening and repeat steps 4 to 7. Precautions. 1. Keep the guide vanes completely closed until the supply pump develops the rated head. 2. The turbine should be loaded gradually. 3. Always keep the speed of the turbine within limits. 4. 
Before switching off the supply pump, remove the load on the dynamometer. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more hydraulic engineering content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.